Hello everyone and welcome back to the Genesis Designs and Modelcraft bench and today I'm going to do foiling again. So I know many of you, probably if not most of you, will have already seen my original foiling video videos where I was foiling a P40. Uh, this was about this time last year uh, and the video got an awful lot of hits for some reason YouTube decided to promote it and um, I think I owe an awful lot of uh, the build that this channel has achieved to that one video. So um, I decided to reshoot the system but this time in 4K because the original video was a live video so the quality is what it is and it isn't in my opinion amazing. So I'm going to go through the whole thing again now uh, this time as I say in 4K hopefully a little bit better quality there's a couple of uh, sort of minor evolutions that have happened to the process. Um, I've been doing a little bit of testing uh, as I'm shortly going to be doing a bit more foil work on an actual model. Uh, this time not a test meal which at the end of the day the P40 was a, was a test as much as anything else. So yeah without further ado let's get on with it. So the things we need for foiling you can see most of it laid out on the desk there already. Um, the foil I use is this. Reynolds wrap heavy duty aluminum foil spelt aluminum nice uh, I got this roll at the uh, American services store at Kandahar Air Base in Afghanistan because you know it's what you do when you're on ops you buy tin foil um, basically I was browsing in the American BX store on, on base and um, I saw the Reynolds wrap and I just vaguely va I mean super vaguely remembered um, seeing an article years ago uh, in a magazine which was talking about using heavy duty foil for foiling um, remembered that it was probably I don't know two dollars a roll and I bought a couple of rolls back and that's what I have there uh, you can use the normal thinner foil but I, I firmly believe that this thicker foil is better for the process it's it, slightly counterintuitive but it is easier to work with uh, and a bit more forgiving when it comes to doing shapes and as you'll see with my method it does involve sanding so obviously that extra thickness is a bonus too. Um, glue, so I'm using micro metal foil adhesive, this is easy to get hold of, it's micro scale industries product uh, anywhere, oh shaky camera careful there, any uh, hobby store that sells micro scale industry stuff will we'll be able to supply this. I'll put a link down below for the Amazon affiliate links so if any of you want to buy some I'll get about six pence out of it. Um, that's the glue. There are other glues which are suitable for this. I've been uh, in some fairly lengthy discussions with, a, with another YouTuber who is trying to perfect the foiling process also. Um, who's, he's using something called Mona Lisa size size is um, an adhesive that's used for applying gold to picture frames really and that and that gold leaf and that's what that stuff is for I haven't yet got any of that so I haven't tried it but at the end of the day I'm getting the results I want using this glue so I have it here and it's not expensive so I might as well carry on using it those of you that have easy access to Mona Lisa size by all means try using this method on that. The aforementioned YouTuber has had a bit of success with that so it, it, it will work. Anyway that's that, so that's the glue. Um, tools wise just basic normal stuff, uh, the sanding materials here, this is a, a medium grade models for sale sponge sander, standard sponge sander, so this is the medium grit which um, I'm guessing is probably around about a 220 grit ish. But bear in mind with grits that different tools sand differently at the same grit so don't just go and get some 220 or 240 grit wet and dry and think it'll work the same as this it would be much more aggressive than this. This is uh, Flory Models Blue Sander this is the final one 800 grit wet and dry this is 3M wet and dry if you can get it get it or afford it use 3M it's just a lot better than all the others and this is the 3M Trizac, this is a P3000 sponge backed abrasive uh, which I've removed the velcro from to make it safer. Put those out of the way for a second. 
normal scalpel that's got a fresh blade in it normal cocktail stick this, this one's done some miles it's my favorite foil applying one and what's happened over the time is that the end of it has become um, hardened almost by the pressure and polished somewhat uh, it just works so I use the same that's why it's got the, the lines on it so I know which one it is normal tweezers and here's a wrinkle this is a um, Tamiya paint stirring spoon basically going to use it for its hard chrome shaft for now for now and I've also got a scriber here for picking out surface details afterwards Cotton buds are essential to the process. I have wooden ones because they're more environmentally friendly. Any cotton bud should do, but these are quite good, so they don't lose a lot of fluff. You know, the real cheap supermarket ones might well leave fluff in your work, so bear that in mind. And the mule today is an unfortunate Hasegawa P47, which has donated its life to the cause. It's an old kit that I'd got kicking about with bits missing, so I decided, you know, since the model I'm going to be foiling is a P47. What better test mule to, to, to sub subject to the process? So let's get started. Let's get going. So we need IPA. This could be anything in here and I could have written IPA on it, but you'll just have to trust me, this is IPA. Isopropyl alcohol, not beer. You need to clean everything very, very carefully and thoroughly at every stage to it to aid adhesion to make sure there's no muck on the model or on the foil so I'm cleaning the foil as well as the model at this point oh sorry this is just a piece of thick plastic card which makes a nice smooth flat surface to work on so that's been cleaned that's been cleaned shake the glue wipe the taste yeah no I'm not really going to eat it it is this glue a lot of people ask it is some sort of PVA it smells I mean every good chemist tests everything by smell right it smells like um, PVA but there's something about it which is a bit different than standard PVA I'm not sure what it, because it remains a little bit tacky um, no matter what you do um, so it's got a kind of a, a hint of contact adhesive trickery going on around it so hopefully you can see I'll bring it up a touch closer which might help see how that surface tension has caused that to puddle up and not, not make a smooth coat of glue we don't want that that's a bad thing so what I do what I've discovered is I take my IPA tissue again and just dab that glue off but I've not cleaned it super thoroughly I've dabbed the glue off as you can see there's not really a glue layer there anymore and then I'm immediately I'm going to put another coat of glue on and I've discovered that kind of priming the uh, foil in that way assists that it stops it from puddling up quite so much and as you can see we now have basically a smooth layer there, there are level differences because cotton buds are pretty industrial when it comes to application of finishing products I suppose but essentially there's no sort of areas where there isn't any glue and that's what that that's what you don't want so we now have to just let that glue go off has a little drink you have to let the glue um, evaporate off if you sit and watch it you'll note it sort of gradually turns more and more clear so that you can't you, you can see it's already doing it you can speed the process up a little bit with the uh, blowing if you're really adventurous you could probably use a hairdryer but it doesn't take long so there's not really any big need to do that let's get a fresh cotton bud ready do I find that the sort of surface tension on this sheet sort of holds the foil in place when you're working with it and uh, actually you get a little bit of glue around the edges so the next piece you can sort of stick it down a little bit just waft this See, that's really starting to uh, dry now. You just see the thicker parts. It sh shows the sort of slight unevenness of the glue layer. The thicker parts obviously take a little longer. And there. It now just looks like a piece of foil again. So that glue layer is gassed off and it's dry. So I'm going to do this panel here. 
basically already cut this uh, piece of foil to just a little bit oversize just lay it down no real technology involved with that and I'm using a cotton bud not one with glue on it because that just makes a mess to just initially press this foil down always work from a sensible point it's not necessarily always going to be the centre but work out towards the edge of your piece of foil so that if there is any need for it to um, wrinkle up or anything it does it towards the edge of your panel so next my burnishing stick and this is just going to press the foil down more firmly and you can hopefully see how that underlying panel detail starts to pop out now that we're pressing the foil down properly thus I have managed to get a piece of some kind of lint or something underneath there and then once I'm happy that the foil is down I just run the cocktail stick along the panel lines to make them more easy to see because I'm going to cut the panel out see a lot said about making sure to use a fresh scalpel blade to do this to, but to be honest um, an absolute brand new one which is what I've got in uh, can be a bit of a pain because if they kind of feel a little bit grabby as you cut in the foil but don't use an absolutely blunt one either I think one that's just had the new edge taken off it is, is ideal personally so I'm just resting the tip of the blade in the panel line just gently cutting down that edge applying very very little pressure if you apply too much pressure it's quite easy for the blade to just pop out of the panel line and, and make a mess of the rest of the surface of the model which we don't want okay so that's all cut out let's remove the excess now you should you should find if this has all been prepared not you know properly that even now these excess pieces of foil are fairly firmly stuck down and that's a good thing it shows that you've uh, you've achieved a good adhesion which which you do need okay so the excess is off and what I've, I've come up closer can you see that slight halo of sorry about the reflections of foil that it does do that <laughs> um, can you see on the plastic part a kind of a halo around this panel that is glue residue where you've peeled off those excess pieces of foil it's left a bit of glue on the plastic and again that's showing us that the preparation was good so got the IPA cloth out again just give it a little rub and you can see you probably can't but I can see that that glue <laughs> is removed it's not super duper important that you remove it but it saves it from collecting up a load of mess from the part that we're going to carry out now so there you go that panel is stuck down it's done I tend to just run around the edges again because where you've cut the foil and then lifted off the excess you can sometimes just slightly lift but again due to that very careful cleaning this this hasn't really happened so there that is on and it's quite a reasonable smooth finish actually I've done it shiny side out it doesn't really matter which which way around you choose to fit your foil because what we're going to do now is sand it down so 800 grit wet and dry the piece I'm using is a little worn it's not very worn get some water Start 
Get that ribbon. Now if you're too heavy handed and if you stand too far outside the piece you're working you could in theory create some texture and finish differences on the, on the model that you won't want so be sensible about this but what you should immediately see and I'll just clean this off is it highlights the texture that is there because of that glue layer you can now see it because you're sanding it and obviously um, the, the sanding will the, the abrasive will only touch the high points so you can see where the low points are if you want to go a bit faster bust out the orange sand and sponge perfectly safe I don't know any doctors but you can trust me this <laughs> I've been testing this quite a lot now when it comes to doing this process panel by panel you don't have to do it panel by panel there's not really any good reason why the majority of this wing piece couldn't be covered in one go uh, because we're sanding the foil that kind of whole that whole deal with trying to make the differential panel effects is negated pretty much um, but but you know again bear in mind that that whole deal with differential panels is somewhat overstated by modelers for the most part and we can restore those effects in different ways later on be honest if you're going for a sort of a brush metal finish like this which is a good in my opinion anyway a good representation of an in-service finish on a natural metal aircraft um, you can make the panels look different simply by sanding them in a different direction to each other it makes the the metal catch the light differently which provides an appearance difference obviously they're actually the same color but they appear different because of the way the light strikes them so there i have through through the medium of sanding removed if not all pretty much most of that unwanted texture that's caused by that glue layer and then I've sanded across this in a four and a half direction now so I'm just getting all of the sanding marks in roughly the same direction bring you up again and you can see now that what you all you can really see now is sanding marks you can't see texture anymore then I'm going to go in with the blue sponge probably technically too big of a jump um, in terms of completely removing all of the marks from the 800 but because these sponges have quite an aggressive sort of grit it does seem to work just vary in your direction and watching what you're doing all the time you can see when you're getting and you've gotten rid of all of that sanding damage it's obviously quite difficult for me to align this so that you can ideally see and, and I can ideally see what I'm doing as well sorry about that again if you go at this like a ball um, you obviously run the risk of sanding clean through this foil it's not very thick the end of the day um, so I do use a little bit of care but you'll get a feel for it you can probably you can sand it a lot more strongly than, than you probably think it is metal after all okay I'm happy with that it's nice and smooth not got loads of glue lumps or anything the bit of fluff has disappeared so the next thing I'm going to do is use this tries act and rub across it again and this time 
I'm varying up the direction a lot. And I don't want it to have any particular direction to it. And by going in the small circles like this, you just diffuse the light that hits it completely uh, and it kind of just reduces the impression of scratches. And again, look at an in-service natural metal aircraft and that is how they look. They do get scratched. Lots and lots and lots of very, very fine scratching. Clean it. I, you do get dirty doing this. Lots and lots of cleaning going on at every stage. And there we are. Magnifique. The final part then. Take a scribing tool of some description. Use whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you prefer. Be gentle. But just find the panel lines. You should be able to see them. Let the tool sit in the panel line just really gently. I'm not scribing, I'm just pressing the foil down into the panel. You can use the back of a pair of tweezers. You could sharpen up a cocktail stick specially. Pretty much whatever you want. If by some miracle you've got even less steady hands than me, it's probable that a, uh, a sharpened wooden tool might be more appropriate. Uh, but note that I'm using the spare fingers on my hand to steady myself so that that shakiness is taken out. And then just to finish off and just to take away any, any excessive marks that I may have made there, just bosh it with the tries act again. There we have it. Trying to catch the light in such a way that you can actually see <laughs> rather than just being blinded by amazing metallic reflections. But there it's smooth, it's it's flat. Now if you were to inspect this with a microscope or a magnifying glass or an extremely negative temperament you may well be able to see very light marks and scratches maybe some very light texture um, but even from a foot away that literally just looks smooth so it, it's, it's good enough and what happens is this this panel was done a couple of days ago and as you handle the thing as you're working the sort of oxidation and everything else your fingers help it and it just that really super fresh look starts to disappear basically and you end up with this really nice almost satin sort of brushed finish now if you want it to be shinier, you can polish it. You can use any metal polish that you would, you know, anything you, you would normally think to polish aluminium with, you can use. So you can use Brasso, you can use uh, like a car waxes. Certain certain car wax finishes have a, a little bit of cut in them and have certain chemicals which, which allow them to polish. Basically anything that brings black off Onto your finger is going to gently polish that surface. Um, got a bit of brass out down here. I'll just hit this gun pan a little, a little bit to show you what I'm on about. This is brasso. It's just, it's just metal polish. Anything like that will do. Something like T cut. Certain, as I say, certain types of car vehicle refinishing agents will will do this for you. You may, if you want to have a highly polished finish, you may want to sand it to a higher finish before you start using metal polishes on it. But I'm just sort of, this is just proof of concept really. Just pop that on there. We're going to make a mess. And obviously, if you wish to polish one panel but not the next, you're going to need to mask it off.
can see that's going black which means that we're taking material away there you go so you want a warbird a race plane or whatever you totally can have one it's too shiny <laughs> there you go money shot so again if you look at it with the aforementioned microscopic viewing devices you can see imperfections but from here we're winning okay so this is all well and good but these are these are very flat panels and you know nothing very complicated about the process and it's not a difficult thing to achieve a quite nice finish I've just showed you that in real time no messing I did edit out a bit of shouting at the dog um, <laughs> but I haven't done a load of work in the background I'm not I'm not cheating on the process that's it from start to finish um, I did mention in the older video uh, you can burnish this foil using something like this the Photouch burnishing fluid if you use something like this to sort of rub it in and leave it to sit it will kind of oxidize that surface and make it a little bit darker and a little bit matter if you want that you can also get those same effects by use of uh, the enamel we weathering products from the likes of Amo of MIG do um, work quite readily on this surface as well uh, and obviously ultimately you, you can spray various finishes onto it to um, influence the appearance after it's fitted the decals will stick to it just the same as they stick to plastic uh, the only downside uh, if you're going to mask and spray markings or anything else on top of this is just bear in mind that just like in real life paint doesn't readily stick to aluminium so just be careful test things um, and find a system that works I have found that the Gunze lacquer based clear finishes will stick quite well so if you're going to do a lot of painting on top of it it's probably worth putting a light coat of that on first to give yourself a sort of a an adhesion promoter basically likewise uh, if you were required a, a weathered finish chip leading edges and wing roots and things like that using actual foil can make that very readily achievable and in some ways probably more easily than using aluminium paints and chipping mediums anyway I digress let's look at some more complicated shapes uh, because there's always going to be areas like say here where you think how on earth am I going to do that if you have a natural metal cowl how on earth am I going to do that because it's going to wrinkle up right this leading edge how do we do this well let's have a look shall we first off I'm going to do this panel here because in fact there's enough curvature on that panel already to cause problems if you're not careful so I'm going to cut the piece of foil I'll do it shiny side down this time just to show that it doesn't really make any difference normal scissors we just size this piece up doesn't matter if you've got a buttload of excess in fairness but you're just wasting glue aren't you so there's my piece I'm going to just sit that down where that glue is sat from the last one we'll just hold it in place a little bit and exactly the same process find a clean piece of cloth clean my piece of foil clean the model one thing I didn't mention and it, again it's not pivotal I don't think but it doesn't hurt is that all of these plastic surfaces um, ha have been sanded with this blue sponge just to key the surface up a little bit 
the um, this this adhesive relies completely on a mechanical grip, so that slightly rougher surface is not going to hurt at all on that score. So again, we've got a little a little bit of surface tension fun going on there. So again, a bit more IPA and just dab this glue off. And obviously in the, in doing this I am leaving a tiny amount of, of this glue actually on the piece when I do that. Not completely cleaning it. And you can immediately see the difference it's made. get through quite a lot of cotton but on this. Probably worth uh, making sure you have plenty in hand before starting. I think I'll fast forward the glue drying part here a little cut. Or I could sit here and sing supermarket music perhaps. Maybe that would be preferable. Do 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 no can't be bothered to do that. <coughs> okay we're back glue film has aired off and is no longer visible pretty much and we're going to place it down on this cowl panel now as I said before there is enough double curve in this panel that if you don't do it the right way it's liable to cause issues so when you look at the panel beforehand you see that it's curved in the four and a half plane and also in the vertical plane so that's what I mean by double curve so this area here in particular this sort of top forward corner has got quite a lot of curvature to it so if so basically there's a risk if you're not successful that the foil will wrinkle or crinkle or, or fold so the way to minimize that is to look at the shape and plan ahead metal can't do double curves well it can but you have to shrink and stretch it to do it. So look at the shape, see where the curve is most extreme, which is here, and make that be the last part you press down. So I press down along the bottom and I can just lightly see the panel line there that I'm working to. I'll come up the back and you can see the foil thinking about crinkling here, look. Push up until we can see the top panel line. And then I'm going to work diagonally, being super patient, going slowly, moving to the cocktail stick. And I'm kind of using the side of it rather than the point. Pushing that. come up here and look at it more closely I don't hopefully you can see that is it it's threatening to crease you can see that it's threatening by the way that the edge is so you just need to be slow and steady those tiny little wrinkles can be persuaded to go away always working in towards that potential crease until you get to the end of the panel pushing it down much more firmly now now that it's on making those panel lines pop so that I can trim the panel and there you go that is on visually confusing I know because the grain of the metal and the marks left by the cocktail stick are making it difficult to see what's going on 
but let's trim it. Horrible grabby sensation from this new blade, I don't like it. I'm not going to worry about absolute perfection here because it's taking time and obviously the video gets longer and longer. Um, but here that is fully burnished down it's not going anywhere no wrinkles, no creases just that glue texture that can be that can be removed by the sanding process as we've already seen now the reason you want to work from the easy part to the hard part is very simple if if you were to press the foil down initially in this corner you, you'd be fighting the crease all the way across the panel down to the bottom whereas pushing it up the easy part there were no creases until we got to about here and we're only fighting it just for this top corner so this is still quite an easy panel and done as you've just seen it didn't take long it wasn't particularly difficult to do this one here with its return lip another matter altogether so this is quite challenging and I am going to go through this now to show that it's possible and well, I mean this panel here shows that it's possible but I'm going to show you how to do it so that's nice and clean now I've got here a piece of foil this is slightly different from the other pieces insofar as it has been annealed basically heated up I used my gas cooker but if you have a small a small blowtorch or similar you just heat the foil up and let it cool down you don't need to melt it or anything just heat it and what that does is makes it more malleable basically it, it, you can tell just from holding it it feels different Obviously this piece is a bit wrinkled, you can see it's already got wrinkles. It's, it is definitely a good idea throughout this process if the foil and indeed the surface of the model are as flat as possible before you start. It's fairly obvious that that's going to be an advantage. But <clears throat> at the same time you do press so hard with, with the cocktail stick and what have you that um, these minor imperfections in this piece of foil will get rubbed out without any trouble at all. So that glue layer has gone down without any bother, no need for double IPAing there. And I'll cut while it dries again. Okay there we go, we're dry and ready to go. So this one, same as all the others pop it into place so that you know you're covering the entirety of the panel you want to do and again start from the easy side you know, being honest with things like this the easy side isn't even that easy but whatever so <clears throat> we we'll basically want to get some of this panel bonded firmly so that you've got something to work from it becomes very very difficult with the smaller areas like this because you need to you need the foil to be anchored um, to be able to work it and uh, it's difficult with the smaller pieces to get enough of a, a solid bond to start moving it so again I'm going to work from the bottom to the top if we flip flip over We've got more curve just here so this is going to be the more difficult area here this area less so I've already done this one so I know it works so but we're going to basically sort of work like that getting the bottom down and working along and you should be able to see immediately that the foil just really wants to wrinkle and I'm not going to lie it's actually impossible to avoid it completely now here, this is really difficult to do because I'm, I have to try and hold the model with the palm, edge of my palm without damaging it and I'm pulling the front of this foil 
just putting tension on it. Obviously, I can't physically stretch the foil by pulling it like you could with, like, you know, vinyl or something. But that tension on the on it does help the process, and you can see that we're starting to build up a quite impressive amount of kinkage just there. But ignore it. Keep going. Soldier on. Be confident. And I've got that down on that bottom part now. That is all the way around to the front up to there. As I say, it is literally impossible to avoid some wrinkles on something like this. But we're going to get around it a lot. Trust me, we'll get there. Okay, so cocktail sticks starting to run out of structural strength at this point. I'm switching to the Tamiya paint stirrer and again I'm just using the side of it. And I'm burnishing the foil down. I don't know if you can see but I have actually got wrinkles there now but I'm not scared. I'm carrying on. I'm really sorry it's so difficult for me to be able to position this in a good way for you to be able to see what I'm doing whilst I do it. With this tool um, I've used the wrong one because I've got epoxy filler on there. The actual spoon part is it's dead handy so use the back of the spoon part how's that well it kind of works just I'm just pushing always working around the edge and get try not to get so that you're pushing the edge down before you've got to it as it were oh, yeah I'll come up Hopefully, you can see I have got a wrinkle just here. Because this tool is metal and therefore tough, I've actually pressed it down to the point where it's almost invisible already. And coming around to the front edge, you can see just how wrinkled it is just off the panel, but we do have wrinkles here, 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 here. And probably just there as well. So at this point, I've basically got it around to this part of the cowl but it, there's a return lip isn't there so what I'm going to do is go back to the cocktail stick bring the separation lines out make them a little more easy to see and I'm going to cut the excess away It's useful to do this because the excess not being there takes a little bit of a stress off the foil that you're trying to work with because it's not trying to conform past where you need it to. It's particularly important again with the really small areas to, to trim off the excess or to, or to slit the excess as often as possible. And then I'm going to cut again for the same reason I'm going to cut down, this is fiddly, cut down the excess that sat on the inside there. And you're left with this rather ragged affair. Yet the camera is quite adamant it won't focus on. Okay, fair enough. Don't get to look at that. So now I'm going to carry on. I'm using the back of the slightly slightly curved spoon, tiny spoon, and I'm rolling it. There's a reasonable amount of pressure here. I'm not being super super gentle. Do make sure that the parts you're foiling can withstand this sort of abuse. Using that curved, just working it around this edge. And it can look quite spectacularly bad. And once that's firmly attached, which it now is, I'm getting inside. I'm holding it from the back to support it and really firmly pushing it down. And this just helps to push all those nasty wrinkles down tight. 
from the excess and roll that in again just to make sure that edge is adhered as well as it can be and we're home dry there you go so that's all foiled it's all on there but we've got what we've got these marks along this front edge that little wrinkle up there pop this detail in a little and I'm going to go straight to the orange sponge and I'm going to sand it down and what this sanding is going to achieve is it's going to take the tops off all of those wrinkles and visually smooth the surface Being a sponge, it has the same disadvantage as the um, cocktail stick in that it's not it's not firm enough to completely eradicate texture, but it has a, a, a rough enough abrasive to just really get at it. So now I'm going in with the 800. Always use it wet. I'm just working out those areas and then we'll get inside right into that corner boom happy days that is it goes all the way around to the inside it's quite hard to see that but it does and now again use of enhanced viewing aids and indeed the aforementioned negative attitude will you can see where the wrinkles are just but it is very 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 subtle Just, I mean, the camera is struggling with this finish to be fair. Where we are focused, there is tiny evidence of the crinkles there, but it's very, very tiny. And what you can do is you can use a suitable metallic paint like Mr. Metal Colour uh, Chrome Silver or Aluminum. I'm assuming it's a spello, but it is literally actually called Aluminum. You can paint that on with a brush and then just sort of polish off the excess and it will just, that little black dot that you can see will be removed which, which will stop your eye from going straight to it. Um, but again, from any normal viewing distance that is fully acceptable. It looks like metal because as they say in the adverts it is um, <clears throat> far superior to metallic paint finishes. It's, there isn't a really obvious glue texture. Um, it's I've got pretty bad OCD when it comes to modeling and there uh, it's good enough for me so an extension of what I've just shown you is what I used here so previously I thought that something like this was going to be absolutely impossible to do um, but I proved to myself last night that actually it isn't um, and I I did this by first foiling this top section so working from this back edge and in this direction, importantly, not this direction, pushing that in and working down. And I managed to get that down to about halfway down the panel before it started to tear and then trimmed it off in a straight line. And then I worked from the bottom 
another piece. Now I was careful to make sure that the grain of the foil was pointing in the same direction on each piece. Starting at this back edge where it's flat, got that down and working the cocktail stick like this. So you're rolling it, pushing it all in like that. Just got the foil around all the way up and then trimmed it off where I could see effectively the panel line where the first piece of foil finished. Trimmed it off, excuse me please, and then sanded it. And again, if you look very, very closely, you can just, and only just, see the join. But bear in mind that real planes and real aluminium suffers from the same issues. It's very difficult to form tight compound curves uh, in in real metal too and it's th the way they do it is with the use of, of, of heat treatment and various types of grades of alloy to help with with the uh, the basic ductility to get it to form uh, but then it requires heat treating because that standard of metal is too soft for the job so what often is the case with panels like this is that they're actually in multiple pieces and or welded they're not one piece panels um, I can cite on the C130, for example, that, that the fairing at the back of the main wing root is welded along its, its edge. What, what you might think is a nice aerodynamic knife edge is actually a weld and it's not even smoothed down. Uh, and this is sort of borne out somewhat by the kit I'm actually going to foil is this Tamiya P47 and, and there's actually a panel line right about where I got my foil to go to. So this one will be even more easy, even easier, I say easy, that wasn't actually easy to do, it was quite hard, it took two goes, but there's a panel line right there, which I can use. <coughs> so there you have it, foiled again, now in 4K, uh, and with complicated shapes. Uh, I think in truth, areas like this fillet at the tail are always going to be quite tricky and but again, using this two-piece method, I think it can be done. And it's worth, it's worth mentioning that a larger scale model is going, to, is going to be more easy to do because these curves won't be quite as tight relative to the properties of the material. So it'll be a little bit easier to get, to get the result you want. Ultimately, any areas that you can't get foil to cover on, you have to use a metallic paint on the... P40 I used this stuff, AK Extreme Metal Aluminium and found that it blended in, because it's such small areas it, it wasn't super super obvious and, and it, it provided a satisfactory finish. So there we go, that's foiling again. Um, hopefully it was useful, hopefully the, the, the 4K is, is helpful although the camera did seem to be struggling a bit because of the shine of the stuff but then that's why it's that's why we're using it because it really does look good when it's done. Um, so again just to reiterate the glue, micro metal foil adhesive uh, and everything else used is stuff that you all probably already have. Your scribers, your tweezers, your scissors, your cotton buds and of course the ubiquitous cocktail sticks. Where would we be without them? So there you go. Until next time, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll see you again soon but for now Look after yourselves, look after each other and Genesis out.